What do we do now? I have quite a point you change. Welcome to today's video. Easy spin day two. My kind of ride. Where have you brought us? I have no idea where we are. I'm not even sure which direction we need to go for the road. I've always been a big believer of you can ride off road on any bike. And once again, we're proving it's true. Having a bike like yours. Oh, so much more confidence, yeah, isn't it? You know, like you, you can see that you're just like completely chilled and there's a few moments like those bumps by there where it gets a bit sketchy but it's not the tires because those are road tires yeah 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 that's like, crazy it's just whatever like slightly more relaxed geometry and absorption of the uh bb yeah it makes a huge have, difference there's definitely no absorption going on in my bike emily's like yeah yeah it's good my i can't feel my arms so a couple of videos back you guys asked jimmy and emily some questions about atticus the clothing brand and about them we're gonna use this time to answer a few of those questions on this log <laughs> Riding off road is harder. It is hard, isn't it? Road. You should have seen us yesterday, Jimmy. <laughs> we were standing next to the mountain bikes at the bike show. And Nick's just like, why do we ride road bikes? Look how much cooler these are. <laughs> I guess the problem with them is that like, you, they're shit for covering distance, aren't so they? So slow. I basically ride under 30k every time I ride anyway, so maybe I should become a mountain biker. Maybe. Don't they have like ski lifts to take you up to like the top of <laughs> You would maybe? utilize them fully. <laughs> Yeah, why not? She's seen us. She's like, guys, stop going. Keep going. What, what are you are guys you? doing? Would you that man over there me? thinks I'm dancing at him. I'll put some music. Release the brainstorm to make the motherfucking brain warm. A strange form. You uh, <laughs> just see like <laughs> shapes jumping up and down. Lawrence coming for the Q&A. Oh, like <laughs> Where did you guys get your inspiration from and what was the main goal to reach with Attica? I wanted to buy some cycling kit. I put a load of stuff in a basket of a cycling company that already existed it came to an offensive amount of money it wasn't very much stuff i didn't particularly like the look of it and it was a uh, many compromises and i was just like this is ridiculous there's got to be another way of wearing what i want to wear and it not costing like an offensive amount of money i started to think that would be great if i could do that but i don't know anything about designing uh, or how to actually digitalize designs i knew what i wanted stuff to look like or what to what i would what kind of garments i would want but i had no way of actually doing anything with it and then probably two years later, I had a similar moment of frustration uh, whilst you were with me. And I was just like, oh, it's so annoying. I wish I could like design some of the stuff that I've got in my head, but I don't know what to do with it. And I can't visualize it. It would cost loads of money. I wouldn't know where to go with it. And you're like, oh yeah, I can, I can do that. And I was like, sorry, what? And then we had a conversation about how I should have asked you for a CV when we first met. Yeah. Uh, just so I could know your skills. Yeah, purely self, the inspiration was purely selfish mm. that we wanted kit that. But even, even like the first uh, couple of, like the first few batches of kit we made was just stuff for us and then it kind of snowballed. The goal is to create a brand that people which just want to ride their bikes don't care about racing. They might care about racing but it's not like a big deal to them. Have a space where they can go and get stuff that they just think is cool but does work really well. From our perspective what's really important is that we just always represent as many cyclists as possible. People that ride bikes regardless of whether they race or whether they want to do really long stuff or whether they ride a road bike or if they just do gravel stuff or they want to ride a mountain bike. We just want to avoid pigeonholing ourselves into a particular type of thing and just kind of be something for lots of people that want to be part of it. But then at the end of the day, if they don't want to, then we've got a nice kit for ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> how did you two find each other and how did you find Francis? Tinder! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, met, we met on Tinder. And me and Jimmy met on Grinder. <laughs> Funnily enough, in the same week, it was very strange. <laughs> yeah, that was like... Five years ago? That's yeah, it. that's it, that's, that's it. it. That's it. Um, I met you in a bike shop in Putney when I met, I met, I was there to do a ride with Lawrence and some of, Lawrence, the, yeah. some of the people that he was around with. The first time I met, or had a conversation with you was you holding up your phone with a, pic, a slice of a banana and laughing about how it looked like Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah. probably a month or so after that, we... I lent you my a road bike and we rode and up. kit. Yeah, and kit. <laughs> and uh, shoes. I, everything. everything. <laughs> oh, you did have a helmet and glasses though. And we rode into Surrey and then probably a few weeks after that, I then introduced you to Chris on Putney, Putney Bridge and then we rode into town and met everyone. That was ages ago. Yeah. Fuck. 
Why don't these two join you on the trips to Calpe or any other group trips? I'd say we don't join because we actually work and therefore <laughs> can't take off three weeks to go swanning around in Calpe. I would very much like to go on a trip with you though. Oh. You know We've talked about it for years. <laughs> yeah, we, <laughs> we keep trying. You just never we keep decide. trying. Let's go to Norway in winter or something. We can That's meet right. Christian. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go hang out with Christian. Love that guy. Way. Actually, maybe not winter. <laughs> Olympic Park or Regent's Park? Oh, that's easy. Olympic that's Park. so easy, Olympic Park. Yeah. Regent's Park's horrible. It's way too busy. It's too much traffic. It's too many cyclists. It's too many cyclists that don't know how to ride in groups. It's just, this is sketchy. Olympic Park's dead. Apart from the fact they close huge sections of roads for three years. <laughs> Does Atticus use a Pantone colour? Oh, how you yeah, it? I think I remember sawing this. So yeah. they know how sawing the colour it. will look like. <laughs> yes, we do use a Pantone colour chart. So it's like, I don't know, you might have seen it. It's basically a massive sheet of lycra. It's like all of the tiny little colours on it. Oh, so it's actually lycra, so you yeah. know what it's going to look like yeah. when exactly, it's lycra. This is the thing. Yeah, yeah. If, you look at a, if you look at a Pantone colour, so a digital colour on a screen, it's going to end up different it's on its own. It's quite different. Yeah. And, and it can even end up different between garments because of the amount of shine. Like, for example, these are quite shiny, so mm -hmm. anything you add at that reflects light a lot will end up lighter than you know you another sort yeah, of yeah. material so we should time. show you we have made the most disgusting kit of all time that could be that would be a very good video oh, title for you yes, the most yes, disgusting yes, kit yes. Of oh all i'm time. excited yeah, it's, so it's basically a print sample of a jersey and bib short um using a lot of different colors that we were considering and it is Vile. Will the didgeridoo be played to Harold in the start of the new kit season? <laughs> not by me. No, only by allowed. men, sorry. It's culturally insensitive, Emma. It's culturally insensitive to not be sexist. <laughs> that too, yeah. Jimmy was a big deal in Cardiff. I'd like to know the story behind that. <laughs> I'm not allowed to talk about it. It probably is true though. That's all I can say. What has been one of the biggest changes since you started Atticus for the both of you? Love it when the both of you are in the vlog. First off is my career changed. Yeah. Um, now you just sit around at home not doing anything. Look, oh, there's oh three sausage dogs. What's enough for like a, a bap? Enough for a bap? Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't eat animals. Look it's at them, fascinating. So I worked in stuff that was very different and now I do this for a living which is amazing. I worked in finance for a decade and I hated it for about nine and a half years. You don't seem like a finance sort of person. No, I, uh. no I, a lot of people that I worked with used to say that. <laughs> What's it like having Emily as a boss? Amazing. Really, really good. She's, she's uh, without Emily, it definitely would not be possible to have got Atticus to where we've got it now because I would have made a hell of a lot of mistakes that Emily basically every single time goes, oh, that's not a good idea. That's nice of you to say so. I think in reality, we both make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> we make a fuck ton of mistakes. Like you just swore, you broke one of your, yeah, rules, your own rules. So was, yeah. Fuck. Fuck. Do we have to move now? Actually do some bike riding. <laughs> Emily, we've gone from there to here. I don't know how this happened. Rims are the worst rims in the world. And they tubeless ones, ready. Yeah, but they don't yeah. even have like, they, it's just like, oh, so disappointed. Oh, Everyone's oh, out today. He's off-roading as well. <laughs> oh no. Hello. I was just explaining you had a gel in a pub the other day. I did, it was yummy. You have, to, have you seen Christopher Lawrence? No. They're here somewhere, apparently. Christopher Hall? Yeah. And Lawrence Hall? Yeah. No one knows his surname. <laughs> his surname is... The dog. The dog. It's like I'm off-roading, but I'm on-roading. Because my tyre's not set properly. It's a stupid fucking wheel. So it's like bobbity 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 I don't know if you can see it from that angle. But... Oh shit, that's loads! Uh... So we are doing a little bit of actual bike riding today. And this is James' shop now. Because Daisy left her saddlebag there. And we want to do some more adjustments. She's finding her shoes a little bit uncomfortable. Maybe if James has got some spare time we can find some new ones, but... I don't know, he's probably in bike fits. Oh right, mate. She left her saddlebag here, mate. I know, sorry. It's My bad. I that's all you tried to steal it. I've got a bike shop. Why do I don't even steal her has, has a saddlebag? It's because you're a thief. So both of my feet hurt. Um, <laughs> your feet the, the, still slam hurt. Light. the slam light? Both of them hurt now. Both of them hurt. As soon as I try and put any power through my, you know, like going uphill, mm. immediate just pain. Yeah. Hands down, strongest day on a bike I've seen from you. You've been yeah. smashing it. I'm out of breath on the hills, riding with you. Uh, makes a difference the fact that I'm more confident. I think so, yeah. Like, you're braking way less. It's a huge difference. But because I can stop and start more easy and I'm not scared of cars as much and um, means I'm going faster because I'm not... That's it. All in the space of a couple of months really. And the fresh new kit helps as well. Obviously. Oh well, yeah, yeah, that adds 30 watts yeah, at least. Exactly. A lot of easy spins. There ain't going to be many easy spins next week. 
making the most of it.